Come and experience the power of Pentecost at the Oasis of Love Tabernacle, where love flows like a river and miracles happen every service. You can find dynamic teaching and preaching and lots of blessings. Experience the power of Pentecost. Watch the healing power of God's Word at work. Come see Pastor Jesse Curls every Sunday at 1045 a.m. and Sunday night service at 530. We cannot wait to worship with you at Oasis of Love Tabernacle. To worship and praise at God's Oasis of Love. Saints will sing the redemption story with their voices clear and strong. When we hear sing just a little bit more of that right there come on I'm, I've been paying attention come on somebody's about to get something in this place tonight come on it's not time to sit down it's time to stand up come, come on. on it's time to get some crazy praise going on tonight well, I thought we said we was going to praise this oh you're out in the new and in huh? oh glory to God I seen somebody praising I seen somebody lifting their hands toward the Lord come on let's sing a little bit more of that and let's get radical with our praise
Welcome to Oasis of Love Tabernacle with Pastors Jesse and Renee Curls. We're so excited to be with you. We have a great, great word for you today, and it comes out of the Word of God. We want everybody to sit back, relax, and take a few minutes to get into God's Word. He has a great word for you today. Great revelation knowledge is in store for you. So just get your Bibles out. Get ready to take some notes. This word's coming straight to you now. Watch this. Come on, I said he's got to be your everything this morning. Is he your everything? Come on, he's got to be your everything. Somebody said, he's my everything until hunting season starts. Ain't that right, Brother Roy? Oh, he's everything to me until football season starts. Somebody said, try again. Oh, no, he's got to be everything to you. Somebody say, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, in season and out of season. <laughs> Amen. He has to be your everything. Who everything to you this morning. If he's your everything, you got all you need. <laughs> Ooh, I said, if he's your everything this morning, you got all you need. Amen. Amen. Somebody said to, me, said to me something real stupid one time. They said this stupid statement to me. They said, all I can do is pray. You don't know the power of prayer. <laughs> Amen. Because uh, uh, all you can do is pray. Oh, that's all I can do is just pray and hope for the best and expect the worst. No, that's not the truth. Amen. Come on. If you can pray, glory to God, things will start changing for you. If you can pray, the Lord will hear your prayer and things will start moving out of the way. Things will start coming into play. Things will start uh, getting put back in the right place. When you pray, somebody said, all I can do is pray. Just forget it. You're not praying right. Amen. Is that too much for Sunday morning service? Come on. Pr prayer is powerful. Prayer is powerful. Somebody say prayer is powerful. Prayer open up the blinded eyes. A prayer opened up deaf ears. Prayer had the lame get up out of wheelchairs and go to walking around. Amen. Prayer is powerful. So don't ever say all we can do is pray. If you ever say that, it comes out of your mouth. Stop yourself and say that's foolishness. Come on. Prayer is powerful. It's a tool that God has given unto us to call things that be not as though they were. Amen. Speaking unto the mountain, it will be removed out of your way if you doubt not and believe in your heart that God's raised him from the dead. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. If we just speak the word of the Lord, hallelujah, things will begin to change. Somebody said that crazy statement. Don't ever say that. All I can do is pray. Oh, that's all you need is prayer. Come on. The power of prayer. Prayer raised the dead. I said prayer raised the dead. Come on. Prayer works. Brother Jackie, does prayer work? <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I get a witness, amen, to, in this place of worship this morning? Does prayer work? Have you prayed for a lost loved one and get saved? Have you prayed for a situation and things begin to change? Have you prayed for a job and got one? Have you prayed for a raise and got one? Have you prayed that your old stinking attitude to change and it changed? <laughs> amen. I'm going to see who's paying attention this morning. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, all kinds of things. Prayer changes things. If it's a prayer in faith. If it's a prayer in faith and believing and trusting in the Lord. Come on. Pray without ceasing, the Bible says. You would think I'd be preaching about prayer this morning, wouldn't you? No. Well, there's another subject, but guess what? God wants you to know that this morning. Well, God wants you to know that this morning. Hey, Amen. That's not my text today, but but look, God wants you to know that prayer works if it's prayed in faith. Mm. It got all quiet here for a moment, didn't it? Y'all ready to go into the Word this morning? I'm gonna start by saying I love each and every one of you here today. Hey, Amen. I'm gonna start by saying that I love you. I, I look, I, you just wonderful. To me, amen. <laughs> I love you. I'm in love with you. Amen. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. We got a great, great church right here, a great church family right here that works together and prays together. A church that prays together stays together. Come on, I said a a church that prays together stays together. Come on, a a bond that cannot be broken. Come on, the devil will try, but we'll slap him around. Amen. Woo. I said the devil will try to defeat us, but we'll slap him around. Somebody, somebody say, how can I slap him around? You slap him around with faith. Faith in what? Faith in what God's told you. Faith in the promises that God's given unto you. You hold on to that word of faith that you have. You wrap your faith around that word, and things will begin to change for you. Let's go to the book of 2 Timothy this morning. Amen. 2 Timothy. We're going to start reading chapter number 1. Now, the apostle Paul had him a protege. <laughs> he had someone that was learning from him. Uh, 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 Paul did and his name was Timothy and he gave him some instructions that was very valuable and we today are reading about the instructions amen that Timothy was given amen glory to God by the apostle Paul now we're going to have to jump right into this amen we're going to jump right into this, but this is 2 Timothy chapter 1, start reading at verse 5. Come on, God uh, has a plan for me and you, and we're not going to be able to see it through without faith. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, are you there? When I call to remembrance the young find faith, that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice. I am persuaded that in thee also. Somebody say faith can be in you. It was in Eunice, it was in Lois. Now, right, I'm going to jump right into this, amen. It was in Lois, it was in Eunice, and he said, and I trust in God, it's in you also. We always seem to talk about generational curses. Have you ever heard anybody preach and teach about a generational curse? Well, I'm going to preach to you and teach to you today about the generational blessing. There is a blessing, amen, that goes from your children to your children to their children and their children, amen, and it could be a blessing. I don't always be talking about the curse all the time, generational curse. Let's talk about the generational blessing. It was in Lois, it was in Eunice, and it's going to be in you or it's in you right now. Amen. Glory to God. That Somebody say the generational blessing. That sounds good, doesn't it? Somebody say, oh, that's a generational curse. This is a generational curse. This is a generational curse. Yeah, it may be. But let's talk just as much about a generational blessing. Amen? My mother was blessed and I'm blessed. And my children are blessed. Somebody say, you arrogant preacher. No. Amen? My mother was blessed and I'm blessed and my children are going to be blessed. Somebody say, y'all not rich. I'm not talking about money. Amen? I'm talking about faith. I'm talking about the anointing. I'm talking about the Spirit of the Lord. It, it, look, and, and Apostle Paul was telling Timothy, look, there's an anointing on the inside of you. There's the Spirit of God on the inside of you. There's a, a never-ending strong faith that you have. Amen? And it, it was in Lois and in Eunice and in you. I'm going to keep reading. Wherefore... I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God. There's a gift of God that's within you, but it needs to be stirred. There is a generational blessing probably uh, in you, but it needs to be stirred up. We're waiting on God to stir us up, but... We're going to have to stir ourselves up. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that ye stir up 
that thou stir up the gift of God that's within you, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Come on, Timothy was anointed by him when he laid his hands on him. But look, we may be anointed this morning. We're in the church, right? Upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We're the church, we're anointed, but we got to stir that anointing up. Come on, am I preaching to somebody this morning? Come on, we're anointed, we're blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places by Christ Jesus, but we got to stir up that gift that's within us. Oh, we're waiting on God to stir us up. Oh, God, stir me up, Lord. While I do nothing and, and say nothing and sing nothing and pray nothing, but I want you to stir me up, Lord, won't happen. Come on, amen, glory to God. Look, we got to stir up that gift on the inside of us. Apostle Paul said, Timothy, my brother, you got to stir that thing up. Somebody do like this. Somebody hadn't been stirred up in a long time. Come on, we're going to stir you up this morning. If you'll, uh, if you'll ag agree with me, let me help you a little bit. I'll jump start some stirring. Come on. I may be able to encourage you. I might be able to say, come. I might be able to say, stand up and shout. I might be able to say, give your testimony. But, look, I can only do that so much. It's up to you. And it's up, look, to the ones that we're talking to. Look, to stir up that gift that's on the inside of us. Somebody got to stir it up this morning. Somebody look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, stir it up. Stir it up. Somebody do like this again. We're going to have fun this morning. Amen. Stir it up. Somebody say, uh, you stir it up, Pastor. I'll let my neighbor stir it up. Now, if we want to have God moving in our, in our lives and in our situations, amen, we're going to have to do this right here. Got to stir up that gift of God that's within you. Remember this scripture from now on. When you get in the mully grubs, and you will probably at times, shake yourself like the old prodigal son of old that shook himself and said, look, I know better than this. I'm in the wrong place. I'm eating uh, uh, what the pigs are eating. I need to get out of here. I need to get, and begin to shake yourself. Stir yourself on the inside and say, look, I might have messed up and done the wrong thing and went down the wrong path, but I'm going back home, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, I'm going to stir up that gift of God that's within me. Uh, Apostle Paul said, Timothy, Lois and Eunice helps you a little bit, son, but now you're going to have to stir some stuff up. Come on, it might be in you. You might have inherited something. You might have had a generational blessing, but you've got to stir that as what's on the inside of you up. Got to stir it up. Somebody said, how in the world can I stir it up? By going to church, by praying, getting your prayer closet, by worshiping and praising the Lord when we're singing and giving God praise. Amen. When the special singing's going on, stand up and say, glory to God, everything you say is true. Praise the Lord. I can testify he's a good God. He's helped me. He strengthens me every single day. He's the air that I breathe. Amen, preacher. Amen, singer. Got to stir up that gift. Come on. Somebody, I look, some, some folks has left uh, services before, and I, I've listened to them, and they say, boy, that was a dry service. Have you ever heard that before? You leave, a, leave a service, and somebody say, well, that was a dry service. Come on, next time somebody says that was a dry service, say the only one that was in there dry but was you. Come on, preacher was preaching, the singers were singing. Look, the instruments was, was a going, tambourine was going. Hallelujah, only one that was dry in there was you. You won't be bold enough to say that, will you? Lord, my wife, my wife, she prays for me daily. I guarantee you. Come on, because I've heard some crazy stuff. Come on, you won't raise your hand, won't testify, amen, won't say glory to God, thank you, Jesus, and then turn around and say that was a dry service. My mother said, if you want something out of the service, you got to put something in there. Come on. Just like your bank account, you won't get something out of there, you better put something in there. Because if nothing's in there, you're not going to be able to get something out of there. We're waiting on God to do the work. 
waiting on God to do this and God to do that. Oh, God's just going, he's just going to come over and slap me off the pew. God's not going to come by and slap you off that pew. Come on. The devil does stuff like that. Come on, if you're being forced into doing something, that's the demonic spirit. They're forcing you and you can't help it and they just slap you down on the ground. No, you got to yield yourself to the Spirit of God. Yield yourself to the Lord. You know what you'll say, Lord? And then look, and then obey what he says do. I mean, I've had, a lot, I've had people say, to me, boy, that was a dry service, wasn't it? And I'm thinking to myself, if you saved, you barely saved. And you told me that it was a dry service. No, you want something out of a service, you put something in that service. Come on, it's getting quiet. In church this morning. <laughs> Put something in it. What's wrong with that? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Put something in that service. Come on. Look, look, look. Yeah, my mother said many times, you want something out of this service, you got to put something in it. Come on. Look, the preacher says something that's, that's right. Say amen to that preacher. Amen to that preacher. That's right there. That's the truth right there. Amen. Somebody's singing a song like Brother Jimmy was singing uh, and Brother Joe and all of us were singing this morning. Praise the Lord and say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I never shall forget that day. Oh, hallelujah, and just testify to the Lord. And remember, you're, you know what you're doing? You're stirring yourself up. Come on. You're forgetting those things which are behind those things, and you're looking forward to those things which are before. Look, I'm a Christian now. Hallelujah, I might have been terrible back, on, back then, back in them days, but praise the Lord, I'm saved now. Hallelujah. It's, everything's wonderful over here. I got the Lord on the inside of me, and just stir up that gift. No such thing as dry services. That's right. Just dry Christians. That's right. Yep. Write that down. Praise the Lord. Brother Kenny, Brother Skinny Kenny, boy, he'll, put, he'll write a song about that. Amen. I guarantee you. All right. Verse 7, you ready to go on? For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. How many is familiar with this scripture? First notice that fear is a spirit. I'm not talking about, uh, you know, don't put your hands in that fire fear. <laughs> I mean, you know, you don't do that, amen. I'm talking about that. Amen. I'm talking about things that God's told you to do and you get scared and you get fearful and you back off from it or you don't do it or you just flat out argue with the Lord about it. Come on, because you're scared. That, that kind of fear, that's a spirit. Look, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear. If you're fearing things that God has told you and you've backed off of things that God's told you, that's the spirit of the devil and he's trying to hinder you, he's trying to stop you. It's a spirit of fear. Don't succumb to that. Come on, because God hadn't given it to you. So if God hadn't given it to you, you shouldn't be experiencing it. Oh, I'm so fearful about that and I'm fearful about the other and I'm fearful about something else. God hadn't given you that spirit of fear. Somebody hear me today. Come on, I hear people all the time, I'm scared about this, I'm scared about that, I'm scared to do this, I'm scared to do that, about that, and this right here I'm scared about. No, that's a spirit, and that's not of God. He has not given you that spirit of fear. God maybe called you to preach the gospel, and you say, I'm scared, I'm fearful about that, I don't want to do that. You know what, that's a spirit that you need to get loose of. Come on. If God has, has spoken to you about maybe singing, you, have a, you might have a wonderful voice, but you, you're scared to get up in front of people. You're scared to, that somebody might be looking at you. Amen. And the Lord uh, wants you to obey him. But we don't listen to God. We listen to the enemy when he says, don't do that. They'll talk bad about you. They'll do this or they'll think bad about you. That's a spirit. Don't go by that. It hadn't given, been given to you by God. Notice, fear is a spirit. If it were not true, he would not have. Look, if it, was, if it weren't true, he would not have put it in here. This is true. Fear is a spirit. God didn't give it to you. No fear when it comes to what God has said unto you. Come on. God's given you a promise. Don't be scared. 
Don't be fearful. Has anybody in here been fearful at times but me? You can raise your hand on this one because I want to see. Praise the Lord. Fear. The Lord will say, put $100 in the offering, and you say, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. You go to speaking in tongues right then. Huh? And you start fleecing the Lord. Come on, I want a pink cow to run right across the street while I'm going to work and jump out in front of me and wave at me, and then I'll notice you, Lord. No. God tells you to do something. He wants you to do something. Don't be fearful, but jump out and do it and say, you know what, that's the Spirit trying to stop me and hinder me. I'm going to do it. Come on. The Lord tell you to do this and do that. Oh, I'm going to start cleaning the church. Oh, I don't know about that. Boy, that's responsibility. They're going to start expecting me to actually come there and vacuum. Take out the trash. Boy, the fear will start coming on you. And I can't do it. No, look, you can. I can do all things through who? Christ, which strengthens me. He's not giving me the spirit of fear. God hadn't. It's the spirit, and God hadn't given me that spirit of fear. But I'm going to tell you what he has given, given unto you. He's given unto you power and of love and of a sound mind. The gift that's been given unto you is not fear, but it's love and a sound mind on the inside of us. Power is ours. But you know what will happen? The power that you have on the inside of you will be stopped, hindered. Hello, this is Pastor Jesse. Once again, we pray that you really enjoyed our service today. I believe that God spoke to you directly. We thank you for watching, and come back and meet with us when you can. Yes, absolutely. We're located at 7721 Highway 2301 in Panama City, Florida. Plan to join us. We hope to see you soon. See you soon. Come and experience the power of Pentecost at the Oasis of Love Tabernacle, where love flows like a river and miracles happen every service. You can find dynamic teaching and preaching and lots of blessings. Experience the power of Pentecost. Watch the healing power of God's Word at work. Come see Pastor Jesse Curls every Sunday at 1045 a.m. and Sunday night service at 530. We cannot wait to worship with you at Oasis of Love Tabernacle.